not everybody should be buying a house right now. Correct. Not everybody that's thinking about buying a house should be buying a house right now. That and you've correct. talked about this in a few places recently. Give the listeners a rundown of what we mean by that. But what we mean by, if you're thinking about it, it might not be right. We've said it has to be right for you, your family, and your finances. But let's bring a little bit more context so that folks that are listening right now and being thinking about it can actually try to establish yeah. whether they should. Well, first of all, there, there's no market where everyone should be buying or selling, right? I mean, every market is unique. Every situation is unique, right? right? So again, when we say you, your family, and your finances, if your finances right now have you with a comfortable budget for a home that would put your purchase price, let's let's just throw out a round number. Let's say $250,000, which five years ago was a, was a, you were going to be able to get oh, yeah. an entry level or better home for $250,000. Yeah. As of today in 2021, that is very difficult to pull off. Yeah. Now, I say that to a radio audience that's predominantly in and around Dallas and Fort Worth. Now, you know, people hear us all the way in California sometimes, but 250 is totally reasonable an hour and a half outside of town and things. I, I think the point we want to make is if your budget is is below the reasonable entry point of the marketplace right now, and you go out and spend hours and hours and hours and weekends and evenings and days and take work off to go look at homes, you really are setting yourself up for a lot of heartache right now. Yeah. Now there are homes in this market that can be purchased for $250,000 or less, but those homes are probably not going to meet your HGTV dreams. So tell folks what, what you mean by that and what the opportunity is. Right for somebody in that situation. Yeah, what I mean is those homes are typically going to have some sort of compromise for you to make to be able to get it at a lower, more affordable price, right? That home's gonna need a lot of updating. It might have some foundation damage. It might be super unattractive, but it might have quality construction. It might be in a location that you don't necessarily want to spend the next 25 years in, but you, might, would, you might say it has good bones. Would be, some people would say that. Homes don't have bones, so I don't say that. But what that normally means is infrastructure. You know, it's got good structure. It's got plenty to work with. Um, what I would say, though, is, you know, I, I wrote a book years ago now. I, I really don't remember how many years ago. 12 years, something like that. 10, 12, 15 years ago. Called... Um, the called live free. <laughs> I forgot the name of my own book called live free. The art of the two year flip. And real quick, what we mean by that is to buy a home that is not beautiful or gorgeous or necessarily in the perfect location, but that would be a great place to live for a couple, two, three, four, five years. Mason's doing one right now. Robert's kind of going through probably more like a three or four, five year flip right now. It's just got to be two or more. But the general idea is you find a home that you would be happy to live in after you've done some remodeling, sometimes a lot of remodeling. You enjoy that home for two or more years. And then after the two year point, even if it's five or six years, you can then sell that home and any and all gains, any and all profits, up to $250,000 as an individual or up to $500,000 as a married couple are now tax free. Your profit, your gains are tax free. I don't know of any other investment vehicle that offers that attractive of a profit opportunity. So our point here is, let's say you have a $224,000 budget and you're like, there's nothing out there that I like. I would say, A, maybe it's not a good time to buy, just wait. Or B, let's find something that would normally be a $275,000 house, but it smells like smoke. It smells like cat pee. It's gross. The carpets have all been ripped up. The, whole, the walls have holes in it and the kitchen is itty bitty. But we could buy that and over the next two years, remodel that. You could live in a home that's remodeled and nice. And then in two or three or four or five years, it can be a really pretty house that might be worth 350 or 375 or, or, or 275, either way. And you may be walking away with 40, 50, 60, $70,000 of tax-free profit. And you actually got into a home in this market. 
That's one example of how that might look. Some of our closest friends have been working really hard to be able to to buy their first house that they've never been able to own a house before. And so this is something that they are definitely looking at. There's some things that um, that, that play well for them to be able to do this. They homeschool their kiddos, for yep. example. Um, and, uh, and so they are looking to try and do a two-year flip because their budget just doesn't meet what the market is needing right now is asking for right now to be able to get to the location that they want and for a perfectly polished totally ready up-to-date house correct but we're looking to get them into one that checks seven of ten boxes six of ten boxes and we can help them convert two or three maybe even all four of those remaining boxes before they move in or within a reasonable period then they can enjoy you know two years or more in a remodeled home and then make a bunch of tax-free money and probably at that point roll up to a long-term family home or maybe do this a few times and make some real cash. There's a saying, right? Short-term pain for long-term gain. Yep. And we're talking about a very small piece of pain here. Right. You may, you may have to live 15, 20 minutes outside of where you would ideally want to be at. But the, the flip side and the plus side of that is that you are beginning to build financial equity in your property to be able to, um, to, to upgrade if you want it, to upsize, to move to a different location further in the future. Because this isn't changing, right? I mean, yeah. we're not going to see houses go back down to, you know, to, like you said, 250000 is going to be a better than average starter home. Uh, yeah. We're just not going to see that again. Yeah, we're not. And, and this, this is the exact strategy that allowed me to start buying homes as a young man, you know, with, with, with no other logical reason to be able to do so. Right. We were yep. buying homes for 125,000 and less sometimes, and they were okay. Nothing that anybody would have been proud to show their mother-in-law. Right. You know, but we were then coming in, painting, adding tile, you know, sometimes we were doing those projects every three or four months as we could save, 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 and then do a project, save, 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 do a project. As we got into our second and third and fourth two year flips, we were doing all of the work before we even moved in yeah, because we had built up those cash reserves. And then we were living in a completely remodeled house for two or three or four years. And we were upgrading every time we did it. Every two to five years, we were upgrading, upgrading, upgrading to the point that, and the truth is, I've still never bought a fully move-in ready house. Yeah. I love this strategy that even when I could afford a move-in ready house, I just preferred the financial wealth building sure. aspect of putting in that equity. Mason, you want to give a 15 second update on where you are with your current two year flip? Uh, yeah, we are like 90% done with our master bath. We spent New Year's, I know I've talked about this on, on the radio before, but a uh, quick update, our plumbing <laughs> failed us. Yeah. Uh, Get, left up. you with an opportunity. <laughs> it backed up around New Year's and it was tough getting the plumber out. Nations helped a bunch with that, our home warranty. Ended up having to move out with a newborn, which is hectic, but we decided, oh, let's just remodel the bathrooms. We were gonna do this anyway, let's just do it now. Making lemonade out of lemons, That's right. Mason. Uh, we are now considering, well, I know our plan originally was to continue to do this with a few more houses in the future. Yep. And uh, I think there's just con some convincing I have to do with the misses. Yeah, well, you have literal infant in your house, so this is not the ideal season for it, but sure. you're doing it anyway. And you guys are approach somewhere around the halfway point of your, your kind of two year piece. And you're yeah, we pretty much finished with all, all the major work. Maybe you'll do some touch-ups and tweaking and little bitty things that will slowly creep up value, but you're going to be sitting in a really, 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 really great spot. The thing um, is, sorry, one last thing. The thing is, by one of the reasons I have to convince my wife to do it again is because she, she just wants to stay. <laughs> yeah, she loves yeah, the house so yeah, much. She's that, told me multiple times. That happens a lot, too.